Hey guys, welcome to screencast number 21 and in this screencast we are going to be creating a full-fledged analog clock using JavaScript. Now I know it has been six months since I last uploaded a screencast in this channel and during the six months I have been really busy with my family and some work commitments. Now also during these six months I have started another channel which is called The Wild Bits which basically gives me the space to explore my passion for wildlife photography and filmmaking. So don't forget to check that channel out and hit the subscribe button and also share it with your friends and family. Now coming back to this video, analog clocks have always inspired me and somehow connected with me on a deeper level. I never really liked digital clocks that much as much as I like the round and spaced dials of an analog clock. Now we are going to be creating an analog clock in this video and we are going to try and imitate the physical analog clock as much as possible in this video. So the design development of this clock that means creating the basic HTML and CSS is out of the scope for this tutorial. So we are going to be mainly focusing on the functionality part of the clock and we are going to be seeing how minimal and how less JavaScript we can use to build the functionality of this analog clock. Now along with the analog clock we are also going to be including a digital counterpart there to actually make the timekeeping more precise for the fans of digital clocks. Now, without further ado, we must get started. Now, before getting started, I have uploaded a zip file of the assets. That means the index.html file, the style.css file, and the quintessential tick.wav file. Now, analog clocks are incomplete without their ticking sound. And often, the semi-digital analog clocks include a ticking sound. So this tick.wav file is similar to those sounds, a very soothing and calming ticking sound which will tick every time the second hand moves. Now without this I think analog clocks are incomplete. So once you've downloaded the zip file and extracted its contents into the desktop or any other place of your choice, we can get started. So I'll do just that and be back in a minute. Now once I've done downloading the zip file and extracting it as a folder, I will just drag this folder into the code editor of my choice which is Visual Studio Code. I'll just close up the welcome screen and as you can see in this folder we have three files. The first one is the index.html file, the second one is the style.css file and the third one is the tick.wav file. That's basically the ticking sound. Now inside the index.html you can have a look at the basic markup and just navigate your ways throughout the html file to see what is being done here. Very simple things, we just have an unordered list with list items spanning from 1 to 12, that's basically the digits and we also have the hour hand, minute hand, second hand and the time piece itself as divs. Now we are attaching the style.css here at the beginning inside the head and we are also setting the audio source as tick.wav. Now we will play and pause this tick.wav using JavaScript but we have to include this inside the basic HTML file. We are also attaching a script.js file which we haven't created till now so we'll go ahead and create that file saying it script.js and we are done with that part. Now here ends the HTML file, we'll go ahead and have a quick look inside the CSS file and you can go ahead and see how the CSS file looks and how it functions and everything else. Now if I open the clock folder and open the index.html file in my browser, you can see it's a very minimal clock with minimal colors, quite nice bold fonts and spaced properly. Now this area that you can see right here is the area for the digital part, the digital timepiece that we are going to create along with the analog timepiece and now you can see the hour hand, the minute hand and the second hand are quietly spaced and nicely built with rounded corners and very slim widths. Now these are all in animate right now and our job in this tutorial is to animate these parts using JavaScript. Now let's go ahead and start doing that. 
Now I'll close up the style.css and inside the script.js, we will first start with an onload function. So we'll start by saying window onload. Now a function will be played, of course, onload. And what will be that function? We'll start by defining the constants. The constants for hour hand, minute hand, second hand, time, clock, and audio. So we'll get the selectors by using the document.querySelector functionality, and we'll get the selectors by using the classes that we have specified right here. Now, first thing will be the hour hand. So const hour hand. We'll specify this as document dot query selector and what query will we select we'll select this query because this is the class that we are looking at for the r hand so this is the class and the class would be r hand now similarly we'll also do a similar thing for the minute hand and the second hand now once we are done with the hands the next thing we have to do is select the timepiece now we'll copy this and paste it here just select the instances and change this to time the next thing we are going to be doing is a similar thing but we'll select the clock here next up is the selector for audio now once we are done loading all the constants we can then go ahead and create the core function for this analog clock and that function would be called set time so function set time and we will start to set the constants here as well now we will start with a constant today and we will get a new instance of the date class so this basically creates a new instance of the date class which contains everything relating to the date and time now we are only interested in specific parts what the date class provides we are interested in the seconds we are interested in the minutes and we are interested in the hours not the date months and year that's out of the scope for this clock now we'll first start by defining the seconds so we'll say constant and we will call the variable today and we'll get the seconds now once we have done that we then need to move the second hand accordingly now the second hand cannot be moved with a smear number it needs a degree value since the clock is a circular thing a theta value it needs now what we are going to be doing is we are going to be calculating the theta value or the degree value using the current seconds so we are going to be creating another constant and we are going to be naming it second followed by degree so deg for degree and we are going to be performing a calculation now imagine the clock the clock is divided into 60 minutes so everything is in the multiple of 60 now a circle has the circumference 360 degrees now since the clock has 60 seconds or 60 minutes we are going to be dividing 360 degree into 60 parts which gives us a value of 6 degrees so each time the second hand moves it should move by 6 degrees same is the case for the minutes hand every time it moves it should move by six degrees so what we are going to be doing is we are going to be dividing the current second value by 60. take the second value and divide it by 60. now what this basically does is it converts the second value the current second value into a multiple of 60. now we can go ahead and easily multiply it by 360 now we need to do another thing so we will just add 360 to the value of the second degree so that it starts from the 12 every time so next we must go ahead and move the second hand according to degree that we have just calculated so we will style the second hand accordingly we'll transform it and we will put a rotation value for 
the degrees that we have calculated using the second degree constant. So we'll begin with the tilde and we'll rotate by the second degree the constant and what we will also do is place this with a degree value. So basically the JavaScript file understands that we need to transform the second hand and we need to rotate it by second degrees, whatever the value it is. Now, what we must do next to get the ticking sound, we must set the audio to play. And once we have done that, every time the second hand moves, after that, this audio will be played. So we can go ahead and test what we have written till now. Now, how we want the JavaScript to load or reload itself, we are going to set an interval and we are going to be setting this to 1000 milliseconds that will translate to one second and the page will refresh after each one second. Now, along with refreshing it, we want to call this function called set time and we want to call this function every thousand milliseconds. Now we are just going to end it. And if we go now into our browser and refresh this page, as you can see, as you can probably note, this is what it sounds like. And the clock has begun ticking. Now we don't know what hour it is, what minute it is, so don't pay heed to the hour and minute hand, but as you can see, the clock has begun ticking and also the second hand has started moving and I'm hoping that it has started moving correctly. Now, next, we must go ahead and do the same thing for the minutes and the hours hand. So I'll just copy this whole block of code and paste it in to basically recreate this for the second hand. I'll just mute the computer for now to remove this ticking sound so that we can concentrate on the code. Now, this again will transform into minutes. So I'll just select all the instances right here and I'll change this to minute. Now, this is the function. We must capitalize this minute word and this is again the calculation that we are going to be doing. Now, we are not going to be needing this plus 360 function because the minute hand only rotates 60 times slower than the second hand and the difference would not be noticed most of the times. So once we have done that, we will save the JavaScript file again and again we can go ahead and check our document. Now, as you can see here, the minute hand does not move. So I must have made a typo. So here it is. I have not changed this from second to minute. So once I've done that and saved the document again, we can go into our Chrome and refresh this. And the minute hand has turned and only thing remaining is the hour hand. Now the irony is it's currently 12.28 p.m. So the hour hand is kind of in the right place. But still we need to work on the hour hand. Now, we'll go into Visual Studio Code and copy this whole block of code and paste it once again to actually work on the R hand. So I'll just select every instant that there is of minute and we'll change it to R. And we must capitalize this H in order to call the right function. And we also need to reiterate our equation to calculate the right R's that is there. Now, we cannot divide the hours by 60 because there's only 12 hours that can be shown in an analog clock. So we must divide this hour by 12 and then we must multiply it by 360. We will add something to this equation. Now, what will we add? We will add minutes divided by 2 to this equation. Now, what this will do is if the minutes here is 45, it will divide it by 2, which is 22.5, and add 22.5 degrees to the original R value. Now, in between two digits, there is a gap of 5 minutes. And 
once we shift from two to three or in between two digits we are basically traversing 30 degrees worth of theta so essentially we are adding 22.5 degrees so it is nearly approaching 30 degrees and as it should it nearly approaches the next digit in our case that is 3. So once we are done with this particular set of equation our JavaScript file is almost complete. We'll just save this and have a look at what we have created. So if I refresh this page now as you can see since the minute hand has crossed the 30 degree mark, the R hand has already shifted a bit towards the 1 mark. Now if we would have erased this part just to get you a better understanding of things, if I refresh this page, the time is shown as this, which is not wrong in any case because it's 1236 or 1237. This is not wrong. The minute hand is pointing at the 37th minute and the R hand is pointing at 12. So this is not wrong, but this is very digital. This is where the charm of analog clocks click in. So we must rearrange our code to do just that, to add that missing charm. And once we refresh this, you can see the charm is added. Now we are done with the analog part of this clock. We will go ahead and add the digital time here just for the fans of digital timekeepers. So how will we do that? We will just go ahead and we will call the time constant. So the time value is basically this field and we will add some inner HTML. Now this HTML is a bit long, so I'll just pause the video and come back with the HTML. So this basically is the code that we are looking at. There's a span class, there's a strong class. Then we add the constant R then we add the constant minute and then we add the constant second. So we'll save this and if we refresh our page, as you can see, the time is shown digitally as well. So with this, we come to the end of this screencast. I hope you've enjoyed it and hope you've learned something new from this screencast. Hit the thumbs up button if you've liked this video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Rest assured that I'm working hard to bring you new videos every week. So that was it for screencast number 21. As always, this is Puma New signing off. Thank you.